Yeah. Yes. So two things. Two things are <clears throat> one is the universal track unit, and two is uh, yeah. how we can get you more involved and stuff like that. So t maybe tell me a yes. little more, more um, about your position right now and. You're working full time, but you're considering delving more into this. The thing we have to offer is that this year we are doing the the immersion. Sorry, my screen. Um, we are doing the immersion training. In fact, I'm gonna aim to put up that announcement probably like April first. Um, okay. Regarding the what we call the summer of extreme design build and the immersion training for builders for the CD go home. So that's that's moving. We're not finished right now yet with the new model of the house. We're still gonna finish that over the next few weeks. Um, but we've okay. got the past models and things like that that uh, we can build on. So that's that's moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, we definitely want to okay. build that tractor during the so the September, October, November. Uh, it's a little late because of COVID. We we're trying to delay it so that make sure everybody's vaccinated or it's safe to do that. Uh, but yeah, we're looking for a build at that time, tractor and everything else. Mm -hmm. Okay, because uh, I know that uh, for now the CDCOM is the biggest project for this year, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But as far as the tractors, we want to, I mean, when we roll that out, we want to say, hey, we're actually using our own tractors and equipment and doing some 3D printing of real building materials. So that's that's all relevant. Okay, okay. About uh, the 3D printer, uh, uh, are you also working on the um, uh, new version of the Mega 3D printer? Well, uh, not actively working on it, but in the background, um, yes. using the printers and printing some kits out in the meantime. But uh, what I wanted to do is actually have a few people come here to do, because there's some priority things that we can be doing, like the big printer, yes, the filament maker shredder, yes. And also the metal yeah. printing. So basically the MIG welder gun on top of a 3D printer gantry. So you, you can actually print full metal parts out of uh, basically metal wire. Right? So With that's... With wire arc uh, additive, additive manufacturing. Yeah. Okay. Wire arc additive manufacturing is exactly yeah. it. So I, I think we can make really useful parts. Like for example, what you're working on with a sprocket for the tractor. That's something you can do with wire arc, I think. So so we can do things like that and eventually yeah. like the whole tractor frames it's actually perfect for printing with wire arc uh, if you look at the cost the costs are reasonable i mean the electricity cost is minimal and, and welding wire is a dollar a pound so it's actually affordable okay and i think uh, you can also use the the same principle of the shredder and the filament maker also for the um for the metal filament <laughs> well yes except that that means uh, much heavier duty machines so you're, you're shredding yeah. metal and then wire rolling which is part of the global village construction set so glad you asked that's yeah. in it. The, the total equivalent of filament making for plastic is there in metal in a global village construction set that's that's right yeah mm -hmm. okay okay <laughs> we know that there's a lot of work to do yeah, yeah there's there's a few things in the meantime, so as I mentioned, as far as, um, yeah, we have some money right now that we can hire a few people, like leading up to the, the summer of extreme design build and immersion training, we could get a few people here and actually prototype some of the machines so that when we're, when we're doing the summer of extreme design build, we've got more to go on and, and prototypes that are going towards product releases. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the CD Com, okay, it's uh, the the first that there will be a, a full product release. Yeah. And uh, yeah. uh, what other uh, uh, machines uh, or uh, tools will be a full product release? Uh, uh, or you plan full, full product release? We'd like to have the filament making the large printer as large printing as full product releases on the torch table and the tractor. So Ooh. those three. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Film making tractor, uh, torch table, because the torch table is used to cut cut things, uh, cut parts for yep. those machines. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, also the torch table uh, was uh, something that uh, I was I was uh, looking about. Uh, so I think I think that uh, it'd be interesting also for me for uh, yeah. look uh, yeah. things goes on. Yeah, D three CNC torch table. 
Yeah, automatic gas controls and ignition. That's the latest that we've done. It works. We got to put it all together. We just haven't uh, finished. Mm -hmm. Okay, I okay. understand. Okay. So, uh, what do uh, you want to know about uh, my, uh, my, uh, my position, my involvement uh, with uh, open source ecology? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what are you thinking regarding um, possibility? So, are you thinking of, of coming for the summer, summer X here, or are you pretty much tied up with your work and all that? Or yeah. Uh, I'm tied up, uh, so yeah. I, I don't think that uh, I will I will be able to come for the uh, for the uh, summer uh, for the summer event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah la later, uh, I, I mean, for me, the things uh, is all uh, evolving, uh, so uh, I don't know when uh, I will be able to come. But uh, I think that for what I'm plan I'm planning to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so at some point, uh, I will come to to a factory farm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, are you considering so the mentorship? You you can possibly consider <laughs> consider that sometime near, or what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, actually, I don't know because uh, as as I wrote you in my previous mails. Uh, uh, by now, I'm trying to uh, see if I can find uh, the, the funds, uh, money for uh, start something. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I saw that, for example, uh, uh, Ken is starting something in uh, Indonesia, mm -hmm. and also uh, Ashwin is starting something in India. So uh, I think that uh, uh, my idea is uh, uh, to see how's going on uh, with them and then I uh, follow the same route yeah 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 we'll see how we'll see how it all turns out now yeah. uh, let's talk a little bit about so about the the universal track unit yeah um, so yeah. Where, do you have a pretty decent idea of where to go forward with that well uh, for now uh, if you, if you see the, my work on the wiki, uh, I did a little bit of uh, drawing mm -hmm. and also some modules. Uh, and uh, today and yesterday, I updated a little bit also the uh, the, the conceptual design, the yeah. the document. Yeah. And uh, I liked a little bit some uh, some stuff. Now my next move, uh, I was thinking about the the frame, and uh, the tensioner uh, mechanism, the tensioner model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is uh, yeah yeah. There you go. Let me let me share my screen with you for a yeah. sec here. So here we are on this, yeah, uh, so. Do you have any questions on where we are? So, so basically the idea there is, so it's a track unit. Did this diagram make sense for the tensioner? Yes, yes, uh, it, it makes sense. Uh, I only have uh, one, one main question uh, about mm -hmm. the tensioning mechanism. Uh, it will be, Mounted on uh, the surface of uh, a, a tra um, of the steel structure, or uh, uh, it will be embedded in the structure. Well, it would be so we probably fabricate it out of steel, right? So it would be um, it would be like <clears throat> I guess probably less not embedded, but but attached. So. How do we attach it? I wanted to open this up. Um, uh, so as far as the tensioner, um, so somewhere, so we have one of these motors here that mm -hmm. will be in place. Uh, we have to extend it like the structure a little bit, like to the side, and make it pull. But it's a it's a thing that's a plate that basically attaches uh, through bolts to the to the main triangle plate of the track unit. Uh, yeah. 
yeah does that answer your question or and it would have to be like the way we have yes. it the way we have it right now because the so the the motors right now are facing towards the inside now we mm -hmm. can consider those being to the outside but no you want to probably keep the track the um initially was was like this where this is towards the inside of the, the machine um okay so you mean that in uh, the, the first idea was uh to have uh, the motor outside well so not in this position uh, but uh, the 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 motor uh, will be outside this would be so the tractor would be the frame of the tractor would be where my cursor is on this side here initially we were looking at this kind of configuration i'm just thinking yeah. for the tensioner if the tensioner plate is here then it's close to the body closer to the body of the tractor which is yeah um less accessible than outside but we don't have to tension it like once it's tensioned Probably the way it's going to be is you tension it uh, to get the tension of the actual drive sprockets and then so the tracks don't even have to be on at that time but that does leave a question once the tracks are on um, there would be a separate tensioner uh, I was thinking here somewhere down like on this maybe this one on, on this idler here where my cursor is, yes. where you're pulling that to tension the track. So it's two separate things. Yep. One is you got to tension the motor drive and tension the track. Now, the way it is here, because the plates are kind of in a way of this face, so we probably want to make the plates, uh, the tracks, the actual treads, smaller, like within, have it between the two triangles, so that these edges are not in and you can access the the tensioner pretty easily does that make sense oh okay okay so then the the the, the two triangles uh, will uh, the distance between the two triangles yeah. uh, will be larger than the track yeah yeah okay yeah something like that uh, so we might have to cut these down a little bit uh, here they're I think they're 10 inches 10 inches long yeah mm -hmm. um, we can make the I think if we make the triangle parts like maybe 12 inches that would work or 11 inches that could possibly be good yeah it's all geometry we have to you know we're just uh, conceptually speaking can't really say yeah. too much until you actually put it all into the the CAD yeah mm -hmm. yeah of course, of course. Yep. Okay, so for the for the tensioner, uh, by now it's uh, quite clear. Uh, I'll try to draw something uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I share with you, so we can uh, we can move forward. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Other than that, um, do you have any other questions on where? Um, uh, yes, <laughs> sorry, but uh, uh, I still have uh, some uh, some doubt uh, about the um, the sprockets. Yeah, yeah. So tell because, me. Uh, yeah, because uh, uh, by now on the on the wiki page mm -hmm. there are uh, three sprockets. Uh, the first uh, is uh, called uh, uh, small sprocket. Then there is uh, another one uh, that I draw. It, it's uh, the big drive sprocket. And then mm. uh, a third one, uh, it's uh, the um, truck sprocket. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, get rid of the truck sprocket. Let me share my screen again here. Let's yep. go through the, the library. Yeah, there's some excess parts there. Um, this one, yeah, that one, forget about that one. That's not the right one. Now, okay. So that one should be replaced. This is the this is the correct geometry. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, that fits the. Uh, there's other documents where. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Um, track. Let's see track. Under bulldozer, I think that was a working doc. Well, uh, there was open SCAD sprocket uh, chain. What was it? Sprocket generator? Open SCAD sprocket. Hey, th there's a link also in the um, uh, in the CAD uh, page of the Universal Truck Unit. Okay. Down in the between sprocket Spark generator. generator yeah. yeah, exactly. So, okay. but as you see here, that distance is about three inches, and uh, those circles there are about two inches. Um, okay. 1.9 inch OD for the rollers. So that is consistent with. Okay. This right here, that that fits in in between those, that distance between the two. Two notches, two rolls. Like, yeah, two rolls is like three inches or so. This is the right one, and if you think about it, you can think of the rollers kind of smoothly falling in and out of place, uh, yeah, to be driven. Whereas here, like that, you can visually see that doesn't make sense, right? Because yes. Yeah. Yeah, like that would be these tiny little rollers. They wouldn't fit in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, all the sprockets uh, uh, I, I drew for now, mm -hmm. I, I made them uh, using uh, the part design uh, function uh, called uh, uh, Involute oh. Gear. Oh, OK, OK. Do you think you can regenerate this kind of one with the involute gear, or no? That wouldn't. No. No, with the involute gear, uh, uh, you get the results uh, on mm -hmm. the two sprockets that uh, that uh, I draw. Mm -hmm. The. Uh, let me think. Uh, yeah. But no, I think I think not because uh, on the um, involute gear uh, uh, function. Uh, uh, there's a, a parameter uh, for the um, uh, pressure angle uh, or something like that uh, that uh, changes uh, a little bit uh, the shape uh, of the um, of the teeth uh, of the sprocket uh, but uh, you've seen this one though right yes yeah I've, I've seen uh, I've seen that one uh, and uh, uh, the first uh, 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 first test uh, uh, for uh, drawing a sprocket, uh, uh, I used uh, this one. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I saw on the first version of the um, uh, small sprocket uh, that uh, was made uh, with, with the involute gear. And that's why then I made uh, all the other sprockets uh, yeah. using involute gear. Yeah. Okay. But yes, uh, I, I tried uh, also using the the, the open mm -hmm. function, and uh, I, I can I can make the sprockets also in that way. Yep. Uh, so now the big you're saying the drive sprockets like the big drive sprocket and then the the small the the the, 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 the the small, uh, if I remember well, uh, it, um, it was uh, already uh, drawn uh, with um, with um, involute gear. Is that the, the first the, the first version of the of the small sprocket uh, was already there when I started working on the universal track unit. Was already on the wiki. Uh, so where did this one come from? From uh, from the wiki mm -hmm. when I started uh, okay. uh, drawing uh, the, the the other parts uh, like the motor, the coupler, uh, etc. Yeah, well, that's right. That's 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 what we want there. So you've got that little bolt. You've got that 
um, the washer there and maybe like a little weld bead to hold that from foam moving in. But I think this needs to be, um, that's not accurate, right? You'd have to redo that for, for the accurate chain drive geometry. Yeah. So yeah, you it's, it's so you probably for that one you you might want to use the well this this thing it's probably the sprocket generator yep. would work for that mm -hmm. that'll be good okay yep okay no problem yeah so that'll be that one um, I'm just taking a look here so yeah conceptual design here yeah so now with these um so th is it clear now so the big drive sprocket that's for the chain and the small drive sprocket is for the chain that's clear right yes mm -hmm. yes yes yeah i told you my 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 question was because uh, uh, when you uploaded the the, um, the sprocket uh, mm -hmm. you uploaded it uh, uploaded it uh, in the small drive sprocket uh, oh and uh, so, but uh, when I measured it, oh. uh, the dimensions uh, were uh, were uh, um, the dimension of the truck sprocket. Uh, okay, that, that's so mislabeled. That's yeah, so so don't call that small drive truck sprocket. Call it the track okay. track drive sprocket. Okay. Okay. That should, that should clarify. Yeah. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't, don't worry don't worry and uh, so uh for me the next step uh, is to redraw the big drive sprocket and uh, uh, the the one that i called the uh, uh, truck sprocket uh, will become uh, the smaller drive sprocket uh, redrawn uh, with the, the the dimensions uh, for the uh, oh, for yeah. the small drive sprocket. right so let's 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 call that the proper thing so instead of track sprocket call it the small motor drive sprocket right yeah okay so now that's labeled correctly there small motor drive sprocket and then this one big let's call that big motor drive sprocket so we're clear about where that belongs Yep. Yeah, that's it. Okay, okay. And uh, one question uh, about the, um, the the names uh, of the files. Uh, yeah. Now uh, I uploaded the uh, truck drive sprocket, and the file is called the truck truck sprocket uh, FCSTD. If uh, I want to. Uh, um, rename it uh, and upload it uh, on the wiki uh, i have to upload it uh, like uh, a, a new file yeah if you want to rename I... it yeah you'd have to typically the way we work is if that's already been done like that and we're continuing to work on it we you know um just keep uploading new versions but if you want to do a, a new file yeah just start a new file and we can reconcile that later just as long as it's clearly okay. labeled in a in a part gallery here so uh, as long as the gallery just shows the proper name and the proper link that's fine you can start new files okay okay and uh, uh, for deleting uh, the old files uh, so that we don't keep uh, a garbage in the in the week in the server etc yeah, don't worry about that because um, you can you can go into that's that requires permissions administrator okay. permissions. Typically, we don't like for example this is this is a good file. So we we like people not to do that because unless you know everything about the project, you don't know if somebody actually used it or not. So sometimes it may not be transparent. Uh, so typically just because memory is cheap here, um, it's okay. It's okay to leave it on until, until a maintainer 
deletes the the files that we know aren't aren't good, which can happen once once we get more maintainers. But you don't you don't have to worry about that for now because um, hmm. file size is manageable at this point, and we put the larger files on GitHub or GitLab. Okay. Uh, about the file size, uh, by now the file size uh, of the of the document I uploaded uh, mm -hmm. is uh, acceptable. Uh, the two uh, are them uh, too heavy. Which which one are you talking about? Uh, for example, uh, the um, uh, I don't know uh, the the motor uh, or uh, motor drive this one. Uh, yeah, for example. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. I mean, 64K, as long as it's okay. under one megabyte, we can download from the wiki. Yeah, but 64K is perfect. I mean, it, you don't have too much detail in there, but that's fine as long as the critical dimensions are in there. So we don't yeah. need anything else unless we find from the CAD that this doesn't allow you to do certain things. Like, okay, but I can tell you some comments about this. Like, for example, um, because there's a mounting plate here, like we yeah. want to draw the bolts here, so we might want to do a cutout there. Let's look at the actual file. Yep. Uh, which, no, that's, is that the motor? No. Um, the motor uh, is uh, on the second row. The yes, that one. Right, so if you take a look at that, you might think of, okay, what are some of the details? We will need to, if we have an accurate file, we're going to need to have those bolts be drawn in there properly. Yeah. So we might want to take, you might want to take that cut out there um, so you can put in accurate bolts. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I searched a little bit uh, here in the surplus center if I can find uh, the actual position and the the, the, the dimensions for uh, uh, the mm -hmm. the bolts uh, and uh, everything about the the mount, but uh, uh, I haven't found them. So by now, on my file, uh, the position is uh, just just, uh, just to draw some uh, uh, some. Mm, in some place uh, for the bolt, uh, but uh, I don't know if the position is correct or not. Yeah, like for example, I just looked at the Google Magneto bolt pattern that it said yes. in surplus center, so that's something you find, something like that, for example. Which okay. Can, I'll copy that into the document. Um, Can take a look at that there. Yeah. Okay. Let's put a source to that. Yes. T telling the truth, uh, I. Uh, I found uh, this uh, image uh, when I I searched, but uh, I don't I don't know if uh, uh, that was uh, a correct uh, image mm -hmm. or not. So uh, I just uh, discard it for, uh, in the, yeah. for in the first place. Uh, yeah, the but only information they do give you is that's that's what they say. So that's for bolt magneto. That's all they say. Yeah. Um, yeah. So but the, the, the bolt magneto is something like a, a standard, uh, something like that, uh, or uh, that sounds sounds like it. But then again, the other way you can say see is okay. You you have this motor manufacturing part number, so you copy yeah. that and you you Google for its specs. Um, well, that's that's the same one. Oh, let's see, it's in a catalog. No, that's that was the whole catalog. But no, I didn't really get anything else. This is um, yeah. how about hydraulic motor? No, it doesn't really 
Yeah, I, I tried uh, also that way, but uh, I haven't found uh, the, the, the the position for the bolts. Uh, so I, yeah. I think, uh, unfortunately, I think that uh, by now the, the the easiest way is to actually have uh, one of those motors. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, for now we can also. Uh, um, we can also draw the positions uh, using the, the the drawing that uh, uh, you found. Uh, yeah, you, and you can, yeah. and a lot of times you can never really tell until you get the actual thing in your hand because even if they say it's something, it may not be that. I mean, that's yeah, because there's so much okay. so much chaos out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm yeah okay so also 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 this point uh, is clear i can update the the, the motor and uh, both on the on the single motor motor file and also on the uh, on the module file yeah you added this thing did you add this some of this uh, yeah yeah yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's just uh, it's for mm, for two purposes. The first uh, is for me as a reminder, and the second also to share it uh, and see if uh, I understood uh, correctly what uh, we are planning to do. Yeah, exactly. That that that's good. With a little links right to the parts, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for uh, uh, about the links, uh, uh, I linked uh, to the to the part uh, to the FreeCAD files uh, because uh, mm -hmm. uh, I already have it. Uh, but I was thinking also that uh, if uh, I don't have uh, the CAD file, but uh, I have, uh, for example, uh, uh, a link to uh, a page uh, of a supplier of a certain component, uh, mm -hmm. I can put the link uh, to that page. Without waiting uh, to have the the component uh, drawn in FreeCAD. Yeah, definitely, definitely the working doc. You're saying you can put that in a working doc, either one or the other. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, the, the working docs are there, so um, just to make it as clear as possible for anyone who's working on it, so people can get oriented rapidly. But yeah, yeah. There's no like formal protocol except just to use as many links to sources and and then to the CAD files on the wiki so you can go from concept to the reality to the part, the bill of materials to the CAD to the concept. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, one other thing about the uh, what uh, I I did. Uh, on the wiki, mm -hmm. uh, for example, for the motor or the coupler, uh, all other all, all the parts uh, that uh, have uh, um, a link uh, to an, uh, an actual product, uh, mm -hmm. I made uh, I added a link inside the, the page of the of the frequent file. Yeah, is is that okay? Definitely, definitely. Or, uh, um, yeah, I noticed you did that. That's good that we have the... Uh, let me see. Let's go to Universal Track Unit. That typically goes... So, for example, if we have the... So, you put it right in there, right on a page. Um, like, for example, this motor having a link right here. Somebody who didn't know that you might miss that but there's a place that's dedicated for that so that would be like in a I would put it in a BOM uh, it doesn't hurt it to have have it by the CAD but on the BOM you should be putting those links in there yeah mm -hmm. so for example if do we have that like the we don't let's see like yeah it's yeah it's there for example so that's good but if you don't if you know that this project exists like say the universal track unit then we organize it through the development template so you know like for example you should find universal track unit bom and even if you yeah. didn't 
know this page existed, you can literally type Universal Track Unit BOM in a title bar, and you should be able to get that without, uh, because there's a formal taxonomy. This is the formal taxonomy that we use for the, all the pro projects. So yeah, you should yeah. be able to find 3D printer BOM or 3D printer calculations and things like that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, I tell you just because uh, uh, talking about uh, the integration between the uh, CAD and the BOM, uh, mm -hmm. I would think I was thinking that uh, if uh, I do the, um, the 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 CAD part, uh, uh, it mm -hmm. would be useful uh, to add uh, that link. Uh, also, if uh, for for somebody that uh, uh, makes yeah, the absolutely. bump. Yeah, no, it's true. It doesn't. It, this helps. This is really good to have that right here, so that someone who is working on it, they can. This this makes it self-verifiable. So you've got the link to the actual part. Someone can download your file. They can say, "Oh yeah, that's good," or they can work on it meaningfully because they see the source. So that's good. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, another question about the CAD parts. Mm -hmm. So uh, the single uh, single files, uh, for example, the motor or the coupler, uh, mm -hmm. are uh, made with um, or part uh, or with the part design uh, or with mm -hmm. the, the the standard workbenches. Uh, uh, the modules uh, by now I made them using uh, the workbench A two plus. Uh, is that okay? Or uh, because uh, I searched a little bit uh, on the wiki and uh, uh, searching for uh, assembly workbench, uh, uh, I saw some pages uh, about uh, the assembly two, not the assembly two plus uh, workbench. So I was just uh, thinking if uh, uh, OSC uses uh, assembly two or is good also assembly two plus. Um, we have not been using the assembly workbenches because they were all in development throughout history. Uh, how stable is A2 Plus these days? Mm, I think it's uh, quite stable also because uh, the A2 Plus uh, is uh, uh, quite an old uh, workbench. Uh, and now there are uh, also assembly three workbench uh, in, dev in, dev in, dev in development. Uh, mm -hmm and uh, uh, assembly four and uh, these two are quite new because they use uh, a feature uh, that uh, was introduced uh, in FreeCAD uh, 019 yeah. but uh, A2 plus uh, I remember that uh, he, he was using it uh, back in uh, 2015 mm -hmm. 2016 so it's uh, quite, uh, let me say, old. Yeah. Or, yeah. You're welcome to use it. The comment is when new people come to the project, we don't even bother with the assembly workbenches and just use, use the merge, merge function. So just conceptually speaking, it's easy to think about downloading each, pot, each file and then merging that into the same document. That's an easy workflow. You don't have to, it doesn't take a lot to understand that. Um, the way that can be made to work very nicely is if the individual files are saved, like if you have an assembly, it's simply saved in the correct positional location. And therefore, if you download the individual piles, files, they automatically go into the right position. So that's an, that's a way to do it that doesn't require a lot of skill for somebody to understand. So we do that in order to have large potential of large scale collaboration. But if you're a power user and you want to do the assembly workbench, that's fine as well. Um, there is like, for example, an assembly workbench, if you assemble it all in assembly workbench, you can work between the two. If you can just save, if you save an assembly, and then you have the part gallery of individual parts, you can simply export part by part or save part by part if you're generating the, the broken down part gallery. So yeah. they're not inconsistent. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, maybe I'll, uh, I'll try with the, the merger. The, the merger is a, a feature, a standard feature of uh, yeah. some work. So, no, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's everywhere. The, the merge is... Under I'm file. Sure. Yeah, that's just a very simple thing. Just use file and instead of import, you just merge. That's all. Okay. Um, now, the thing about merge, why that's use, usable, useful for large, large assemblies, well, in an assembly workbench, you have to have the whole thing saved. If you use merge, you can save it part by part and therefore keep it on a wiki. So it, it's, a, it's a way to organize files in a gr very granular way. You can be working, like whenever you want to build something new, you're mer because it's a construction set, you typically want to take parts, borrow parts from other things. So the merge workflow is very useful for the way we do things in a construction set approach. Okay, okay, but with uh, using merge, uh, you take uh, in uh, in the file uh, all the information of the file you merge. Mm -hmm. Is it correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think uh, maybe that way all the files uh, will the the uh, assembly file uh, will be much heavier. You can have well with the merge, you can make a much larger project locally by taking many different parts that would be altogether very heavy. So because um, you know some files could be super heavy and it's just really hard to work with them as assemblies, the advantage of using the merge is that you just take the parts that you need into the current working document so you don't have to carry the whole thing. And But the most important thing about the merge and the saving in FreeCAD is that you save things in a positionally correct orientation. So if you take a whole assembly and you save the individual parts, once you merge them, they will appear in a correct place. That's a, obviously, but that's a, that's a very useful thing. That's, with that, you can do a lot. Yeah, yeah, okay. But uh, you have uh, to pay attention uh, uh, to the, to the position uh, on the original file. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this okay. is different. So, oh, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I understand because uh, uh, by now I use uh, using uh, um, P two plus. Uh, I don't have this kind of issue because uh, I simply use uh, constraint, for example, axial constraint or uh, planar constraints. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, that's uh, a good way. I place everything uh, correctly. What happens? But tell me this: What happens if you work on the individual file with an A2 plus? Can you import a new version of an like the file, the source file? So, say people are many people are working on different modules. Can yeah. you import that into the final assembly readily? Yes, and also if the file, uh, the file or the subassembly. Uh, is modified uh, by someone else, uh, uh, you can uh, simply update it. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a, a button yeah. to update the, 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 the assembly you are working on with uh, the files uh, of uh, the updated files. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I remember yeah. well, uh, this also keeps uh, all the constraints. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to uh replace uh, everything uh, and tell uh, okay this is an actual constraint this is a planner constraint yeah etc yeah that's very useful it just requires a little more skill for somebody to be able to manipulate that i mean if yeah. you're talking about very basic entry level people versus a uh, little more more skilled people mm -hmm. okay okay Okay, so uh, I, I'll, uh, I'll try with the merger and uh, I'll tell you all what's the result. Yeah, yeah. But uh, by now, I, I think that uh, uh, if, uh, for example, the, the, the module, uh, the motor module uh, that you were uh, seeing before, uh, it's uh, only 64K, 
with the merge, I think that uh, it will be much heavier. Oh, is that so? Mm. Yeah, I think so, because uh, if uh, with merge uh, you take uh, in the project, uh, in the file, uh, all the information uh, of the file you're merging, uh, then uh, the size uh, will be the sum mm -hmm. of the size of the single files. Uh, instead with the uh, uh, with the H U plus, uh, I don't know in detail mm -hmm. how does it work, but uh, I think that uh, it's uh, it takes only the shape uh, or only the, the the latest feature of the part uh, you're importing. Uh, so that's not mm, you don't see everything uh, about uh, the part uh, you are importing uh, mm -hmm. and the, this makes uh, the, the 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 single uh, parts uh, more uh, more lightweight uh, and therefore uh, the whole assembly is uh, more lightweight mm -hmm. okay yeah we can do a comparison between the two yeah okay okay I, I'll try also that one mm -hmm. okay uh, so I was uh, reading uh, the the last mail uh, we we sent uh, each other mm -hmm. to see if uh, there are some other points about the um, the, the truck unit. Uh, mm, one thing uh, that uh, I, I haven't uh, discussed with you yet: uh, the um, the shafts. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. For both the um, the, the the either module either module mm -hmm. and the drive module, um, there uh, should there be some space uh, between uh, the triangle uh, and uh, the shaft, uh, or the shaft uh, should uh, pass uh, through the the triangle. Uh? Yeah, you want some clearance so it's not rubbing against that yeah. yeah yeah so make that you know like a quarter inch larger or so okay okay and uh, also um, about the shafts uh, uh, we have also to add the holes uh, for uh, the um, for the screws uh, with the uh, with the bearings uh. Yeah, you have to you have to make those holes in there for this. There's is that what you're asking? Yeah, those screws will be there, and those would be relatively tight, tight fitting. Mm -hmm. To yeah. within like oversize the hole by one sixteenth of an inch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the um, uh, the big drive sprocket uh, will be welded. Uh, with the, the with the shaft, uh, or uh, uh, we need to tap oh. another hole uh, and uh, use a, um, a bolt uh, and a washer, uh, etc. Oh, I see that one. Probably, uh, I mean, the standard thing to do would be a keyway. Let's see. Um, okay. So the big shaft. How do we? You're saying how do we? Let's take a look at that. Let me share the screen again so if we're here how are we attaching it well we have versions of this where we use the clamp collar which we um, let me show you some photo uh, or let's go to the clamp collar let's search for clamp collar Now let's go to design guide. We'll be under the design guides under shafts and collars. Um, shafts, shafts and bearings. Was that here? This concept here of the clamp collar, I think we might want to do that because 
then you don't have to worry about machining a keyway and putting in keys which in the middle of a shaft that's a bit of work and you can't just take that thing take that sprocket off so I would actually favor doing this kind of a thing um, which works really well so you basically cut a piece of tube in half and then you can yeah. weld the sprocket on now the sprocket only this disadvantage there is um, no you don't have to cut the sprocket the way you do it is um, if you can picture it oh, I just took some pictures of this um, don't have those pictures here but if we go to let me show you some other pictures from elsewhere yep uh, from some shared albums where I'll show you how one of those things look that would be under See if there's any here, but oh yeah, you can see it. You can see it yeah. in underneath yeah. here, but you see how the clamp yeah. collar—it's on both sides. It's clamped while the the middle part where the drive sprocket is. Mm -hmm. That part is actually—it's not split there. Only the ends of it. So there's a long tube. There's a tube, and then the end yeah. of the tube is cut and split and and uh, clamped on this is enough to hold in english torque it's like fifteen thousand inch pounds that's the motor that's back there so this okay. can hold fifteen thousand inch pounds what is that i think that's like 120 newton meters or something let's see that uh 115 thousand inch pound to newton meters um Oh no, like six, 17, 1,700 Newton meters. That's, that thing is tested for that much. There's no problem with that holding that much, 1,700 Newton meters. Um, okay. So we can use that um, as, as the way to do it. Cause that would fit, it would pretty much fit right in there. And that way you can take it on and off relatively easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh. replicate that. Yeah, just replicate that part. Okay. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I will do this uh, for both the um, uh, drive module and the idler module. For the idler? Um, idler, yeah. Well, no, you don't have to do that for the idler module because the idler has bearings on it. Right? So if you look at the idler, yeah. Uh, where is? Well, if you look at this, if you look down here, those are bearings right there. So these bearings, this. Oh, I see. I see. How do you? Oh, I see what you're saying. No, you're right. You're right. You can do the same. But you don't need so much clamp because that's just free spinning. Just just a light clamp with because for the drive part, oh, you need a lot of force to you need to hold a lot of force there. Um, now, as you see, the spatially speaking, if the bearings are facing in, you don't have space, so we might need yeah. to put the bearings facing out. Um, you probably have to put the bearings on the outside, but for the idler part. Um, which is like, for example, this one. Yes, you can use the clamp, but it doesn't have to be nearly as strong because all you need to do is prevent this 
the sprocket from moving sideways, but it can free spin because there's bearings there. Oh, uh, okay. See what I'm saying there? Okay, okay. Wait, wait a second. That's not right. Um, okay, let's let's review that. I didn't I didn't say it accurately. This where you drive in the the shaft, that connection there has to be super tight, and that we're gonna accomplish. Well, that's the first question to ask. How are you gonna make sure that when you drive the track, the big sprocket there? How do you keep that super tight? I would say we can use the clamp, but because the clamp takes so much space, we probably are reduced to a keyway, a smaller keyway, mm. which is much more tight, much more space saving. So that mm. happens there. But on the inside, this one, you can put small clamps on there. You don't need like the double clamp, just a simple like one, one bolt on each side would probably work. Yep. Uh, so do a okay. clamp on, on each side. Yeah. Does that make sense now? Is that clear? Because here, here's the, all the force goes into that driving the shaft there. But once you're here, that's essentially free spinning. You see? Yeah. Because around the bearings. So it only ha has to hold to the shaft um, mildly, not, not to prevent the from spinning because it, it wants to spin the shaft um, oh. am I explaining yes. that correctly yeah and we, are, we have also to consider that uh, the, the clamp uh, can't be uh, that can't be so much big because uh, otherwise yeah. uh, right. it will uh, collide with the um, yes. uh, with the trucks yeah that's right that's right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only other way to do it, like it would take more work. Like if you put put a s hub there for the sprocket, you can put a keyway in there, um, yep. and that way you can save more space. But yeah, this gets into some some design decisions here, but. You might notice that once you see, I'm kind of looking at this, and I'm I'm seeing that unless the the clamp takes a lot of space, it just doesn't fit. So maybe, uh, yeah, it would be hard to fit. So actually, we might have to be forced to do a keyway there. Yeah, it's it's getting tight because see how much space these uh, tracks take up. That would hit yeah. hit the the clamp, which is right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think, yeah, just go with a keyway, keep it simple. I mean, in fact, if we want to cheat for now, since we're just doing a prototype, we can just weld it for now, because doing a keyway and fitting a key in there, um, mm -hmm. so just ignore it for now and just make it welded. Or we know we can put a keyway in there. Like, okay, if I'm going to be building this right here, I would just weld that sprocket on um since that's really easy and in fact it doesn't have to be like a big weld it could be just almost um it doesn't have to be a super strong weld because we have bearings there that it just needs to hold it but not with super super high high force okay okay Mm -hmm. Understand. And uh, well, maybe we talk about that uh, later. Yeah. But uh, for the key, uh, it's uh, enough. Uh, one key. Yeah, you can. You have. You can have like a one half inch key. Half inch. That's pretty big. There's big keys. Yeah. Oh. Half inch by half okay. inch, like twelve millimeter by twelve millimeter key. That's pretty solid. Yeah. Okay. In, in a rapid prototype, we can just weld it. But once we're finalized and we're ready for production, we we want to put a key in there, probably. Yeah. Okay. It's clear. And uh, the the truck sprocket. Uh, uh, 
uh, will be custom or uh, uh, do you think that uh, we can uh, find it uh, at uh, some store? No, we're not going to find it at a store. That's a CNC cut thing. Okay. Okay. So, so we don't have uh, problems about the, the... No, no problem. I have a bunch of those uh, here still, so we can reuse those. Okay. 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 And uh, about uh, the um, the big drive sprocket. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, how do we fix it uh, on the um, on the shaft? The big motor drive sprocket. Yeah. Yeah, I would say keyway. Key. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, you have also to um, to uh, work on that uh, because uh, the uh, the the bore is, uh, if I remember well, uh, uh, a, a an inch and uh, twenty five, but uh, okay. the the shaft is uh, oh, yeah. one. Uh, Mm. We yeah we have to probably lay that out unless we can find yeah we, we just lay that, that out yeah we have to get our lathe up and running here and and lay that lay that mm -hmm. okay okay yeah just uh, just uh, for me to understand uh, well the, the various uh, steps mm -hmm. yeah uh, so this is actually working as. I actually pull this up. Um, there it is. Yeah. That's yeah. what we're talking about right there. Okay. This is a uh the the truck uh, sprocket yeah okay 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 yeah this is, this is this shows exactly so this is the sprocket this is actual yeah that's the standard universal wheel, wheel unit that we use but this truck sprocket here it's that's the clamped structure oh yeah there it is uh, and here you take you see where the clamp is taken, the bolts are taken off. Yeah. And it comes off pretty much readily and it doesn't require any through holes through the shaft. Yeah. Mm. That's the but, shaft. Uh, you, you can you can uh, make it that way if uh, you don't have uh, issues uh, like uh, the issue we have with the trucks. Yeah. If you have a lot of space, you can do it. But this was used to drive the the track, like in the other other machine. Yeah. So if you if your space allows you to do this, if you've got enough shaft space, you can use this kind of a clamp collar structure, and that works works well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Hey. Clear. Very clear. Yeah. And uh, uh, I would like to ask you just uh, a another question uh, since uh, it's uh, it's uh, five p.m. for you and for me it's uh, eleven p.m. Yeah. So uh, uh, about the, the the docs, the working document mm -hmm. and uh, various document. Uh, so by now I asked you the. Um, the uh, the permission 
for uh, for uh, the modifications, uh, but uh, uh, all the doc the working document uh, should be uh, editable uh, since the beginning. Is it correct? Yeah, yeah. Make it editable. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if uh, I start a working doc, uh, I make it editable since the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. And if I find uh, some some document that is not ed editable, uh, I'll uh, ask you the permission, uh, like for uh, the previous one. Yep. That's it. Okay. Okay, okay. Good. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Sounds good. So, I think that's about mm -hmm. it for now. Yeah. Yeah. For me, for me, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think think that uh, if we want, uh, we can talk uh, for hours and hours mm -hmm. and hours. Uh, but uh, for now, I think uh, I think uh, it's okay, yeah. and uh, we can keep in touch by mail uh, and. Uh, on the wiki and everything else. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, so uh, keep going at it, and we'll build this. Uh, start getting this built. Um, if basically as soon as we have this pretty much done, we can. I want to get somebody here and, and prototype that. So I want to get somebody to build it. So yeah, whenever you, whenever it's done, um, we can pretty much prototype it. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, I. When I have uh, enough time, yeah. I try to, uh, to to move forward uh, and do all the the tasks. Uh, so mm -hmm. I hope uh, that uh, uh, in no much time uh, we can have uh, something uh, that uh, that can already be built. Yeah, yeah. And we we have experience with a bunch of the parts, like the tracks and and. The different sprockets. So a lot of this is already done. We just need to rework it to this new configuration. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it uh, it could be interesting uh, if uh, uh, you have uh, some part uh, that uh, it's already built, uh, and uh, you just give me the dimensions uh, and uh, some picture uh, if. Uh, there's no, if uh, there's no uh, if it isn't already on uh, on the wiki yeah so I can uh, make the the cut file for uh, the parts that uh, you already have yeah yeah I can do that and that typically goes into like the pictures and data collection if I, if I have anything that that's relevant I can put it in the pictures for the universal track unit uh, for former parts yeah now the beauty of this is that once we have this, it's very highly scalable. So we mentioned that on one side you can put one or two motors on it. The motor that you can put on it can be much stronger as well. But if you have one of these units, the standard machine will, will contain four of these, but there's no reason why you can't put on more, like eight of them, like double them up. So it's completely scalable to, uh, to very large machines. So this is really good if we can make this work out. It's going to be good for a normal kind of a small, like a like a skid steer type of a tractor, to even to larger agriculture machines that have to pull a lot of stuff. So that's pretty good. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's uh, it's also on the conceptual design document. Uh, mm -hmm. This concept. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe we just have to pay some attention about the 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 various dimensions. Uh, but uh, I think uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, that uh, if we design it correctly, we can scale it up uh, pretty pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sounds so, good. Martin, for mm -hmm. now, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you. We uh, we keep in touch uh, we, by mail. All right. This is also, so yeah, we'll we'll keep talking. So thanks, and we'll be in touch. Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.